right now as we speak, there is a deep, a wide, and a very aggressive panic in the Democratic Party. It started minutes into the debate and it continues right now. I mean, the panic that I am hearing from Democrats is not like anything that I have heard. It was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain of what we saw tonight. A lot of mo uh, notable moments, painful moments uh, from tonight. I think there was a, a sense of shock, actually, at how he came out at the beginning of this debate. I think Joe Biden lost in the first three minutes. Unmitigated disaster for President Biden from the second he walked out to the closing statement. Uh, you know, he seemed a little disoriented. Biden's answers were, in a lot of cases, not coherent. It was an atypically bad performance. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh, he, he did not do well at all. If anybody in America thinks that that was even close to being a, a, an okay debate by Joe Biden, I'm living in a parallel universe. But you put somebody who was suffering from the moment that they got out, it, it was hard to watch. I had to occasionally look away because it was so uncomfortable. It was a really disappointing debate performance from Joe Biden. I don't think there's any way, any other way to slice it. There's a, a real concern here tonight that there's been some real damage done that cannot be undone. The candidacy has fallen. I've been doing this for 30 something years, going on 40 years, and I have never, yeah. ever had what happened on this thing tonight happen in the middle of the debate. It started early and it continued. I think a lot of voters probably tuned out and millions of people are having conversations with their families, with their friends, of if the president is up to the task and if he should step aside. It involves party strategists, it involves elected officials, it involves fundraisers. And they're having conversations about the president's performance, which they think was dismal, which they think will hurt other people down the party in the ticket. And they're having conversations about what they should do about it. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Some of those conversations include, should we go to the White House and ask the president to step aside? Others are, other of the conversations are about, should prominent Democrats go public? I've heard from leading Democrats across the United States, elected governors, congressmen, of course, texting me and saying, I'm worried I'm gonna lose if Joe Biden's at the top of the ticket. Uh, we're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. If, if he's on the ticket, I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't know a voter under 30 who would have watched tonight and could say, I have confidence in Joe Biden and casting my vote for four more years of Biden. They are now seeing a president who is in the White House, who they do not necessarily believe can can do this for another four years. Bob Casey, I promise you tonight in the state of Pennsylvania, is thrown up in his mouth because he knows that if he's got to stand next to Joe Biden, he's going down in Pennsylvania. We should pray for the president. I think his advisors, I think the White House, and I think his family have a lot of explaining to do to their party and to the American people. Some of my Democratic friends are texting me saying, I can't believe this is where we are, right? Yeah. I can't, I, I don't forgive, I can't, I'm not going to be able to forgive the party for putting in this, yeah. in this position. You cannot tell me democracy is on the line and then give that performance tonight. If, based on that, in 18 weeks, Donald Trump will be the president-elect. President-elect. <laughs>